What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video, we're going to have a look at spectrum analyzers, specifically the tiny SA, which is a compact affordable tool that you saw used in the last video. It's seen a lot of use here at the comms channel, everything from troubleshooting mesh-tastic devices to testing for spurious emissions like you saw in the last video. So join me and let's have a look at everything this device can do. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, CC sent me this Tiny SA Ultra for this review, which is an upgraded version of the Tiny SA Basic, which I purchased myself a while back. For those of you new to the concept, a spectrum analyzer is a device that basically shows you which frequencies are active around you and how strong they are. It quickly scans through a frequency range you specify and it'll show peaks where there's active signals it's picking up. Previously, you would have to spend thousands of dollars on professional equipment to do this, but now, with the Tiny SA, this can be done at a fraction of the cost. Now, this of course won't be as good as the expensive equipment used by RF engineers, but it's good enough for the hobby uses many of us would use this for. Now, this is actually more than just a spectrum analyzer, though. It's also a signal generator which we can use to actually test the sensitivity of a radio's receiver, which is something I think a lot of people overlook. Now, before we go everything you can do with it, let's go over the notable differences between the Tiny SA and the Tiny SA Ultra. The first difference is gonna be the screen size. The Tiny SA Basic has a 2.8 inch touchscreen and the Tiny SA Ultra has a four inch touchscreen. Next will be the frequency range and the Tiny SA Basic covers 100 kilohertz to 960 megahertz. And the Tiny SA Ultra has an ultra mode that you can put it in that allows it to cover 100 kilohertz all the way up to six gigahertz. Another difference to point out on that note is that you'll notice that the Tiny SA Basic has these SMA connectors labeled high and low. The Tiny SA Basic can only cover 100 kilohertz to 350 megahertz on the low input and 240 megahertz to 960 megahertz on the high input, which means that if you need to run a test with wider coverage than each input can provide, you'll need to run the test twice, one on each input. The Tiny SA Ultra, on the other hand, can scan through its entire range on the single RF input, so no need to run the test twice if this requires a wide scanning range. And the final difference we'll mention in this video is that the Tiny SA Ultra has a micro SD card slot for storing measurements and configurations. Now there are more differences as well, but I won't go into all of them in this video, but I'll provide a link to this Tiny SA page showing them. As far as what's included with the devices, they both come with a stylus for the touchscreen, an SMA antenna, USB cable, guitar pick for the touchscreen, an SMA barrel connector, and two SMA cables. The only difference is that the Tiny SA Ultra comes with a micro SD card since it has a slot for it. So what can we do with these devices? I'll quickly go over some things that this can do that make it handy to have around. I won't go too in depth into each use case as I plan on doing a detailed video on each one. The first thing is something I used it for in my last video, which was checking for a radio's spurious emissions. Spurious emissions are signals transmitted on frequencies other than the frequency you intend to transmit on. In the case of the radio from the last video, we can see that it was transmitting on a number of additional frequencies. The FCC has rules on how powerful these additional signals can be, and the concern there is that you could be potentially interfering with other radio systems. Now, I'm sure the FCC isn't going to raid your house with guns blazing if you're causing harmful interference, but there have been cases where the FCC has investigated and made contact with users of radios causing interference like this, and my goal is just to show you how to check to prevent that from happening. You may notice that I'm using this black thing with fins for this test, and this is an attenuator which drops down the power level of the signal, and this is very important to do so we don't burn up the tiny SA. We'll go more into depth on how to perform these tests when we do that video soon. Another time the tiny SA was handy to have was in January of 2023, when I first started using the Rack Wireless WizBlocks for Meshtastic. I flashed firmware to it and tried to do a range test and couldn't get more than a few blocks of range, and this was unusual based on some of the WizBlocks that were working fine prior to this, and I used the tiny SA to help troubleshoot the issue. One of the things you can do with the Tiny SA is get a reading on how many watts a radio is putting out. 
To test this, I hooked up the WizBlock to the TinySA and found that it was barely putting out any power, leading to having a range of only a few blocks. To test if this was some sort of a hardware issue or a firmware issue, I flashed some test code from the Rack Wireless GitHub that just transmits text, and I was able to see that the signal's power levels were normal using this, which meant that it was an issue with the MeshTastic firmware rather than a hardware issue. Luckily, the developers were quick to come out with the fix for this, and I was able to get MeshTastic firmware onto the device with normal power levels. Another use of the TinySA is for using the signal generator and testing the receiver sensitivity on radios. This is something that is sometimes overlooked, and people like to focus on how many watts the radio puts out, but a quality 5-watt radio with a good receiver will actually get you more range than a poorly made 7-watt radio with a crappy receiver. Now as you can see, there's a number of good uses for the TinySA, and there's even more than I covered in this video. But this is just meant to be a brief introduction to the TinySA, and we'll be getting into more in-depth videos on how to perform these tests I mentioned. If you'd like to get a TinySA Ultra, I'll have an affiliate link to it in the video description below. At the time of this recording, it looks like they currently have a coupon for $30 off, and in addition to that, they're offering a 10% off promo code for viewers of the comms channel of Q4AP37RY. Now, this promo code is only valid from September 5th until September 14th. While they currently don't have any deals on it, if you don't need all of the features of the TinySA Ultra, the TinySA Basic is still a pretty capable device at an affordable price. And I'll have an affiliate link to that in the video description as well. That'll do it for this video on the TinySA, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, so you won't miss out on any future content in this series of videos on the TinySA and more, including more direction finding videos, which I know a lot of you are looking forward to. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Thank you all and have a good one.